Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. Now it's time to merge the line following part of our program with the can finding part of our program. But before we get started, let's have a look at the completed program. I've laid out a reasonably complicated course. The robot starts and it comfortably follows a sweeping bend. It gets round the square corner bend. It gets round the sharp angular corner bend. It passes over the hairpin turn. It detects the silver at the edge of the chemical spill, moves to the centre of the chemical spill and starts searching for the can. And there we have it. The robot has successfully pushed the can out of the chemical spill area. Now, how did we achieve that? Let's have a shot at running the existing line following program at the end of the tile as it approaches the chemical spill. It's following the line, passes over the silver, and you can see the robot continues attempting to follow the line. What we have to do is modify our main loop where the line following is going on, adding what's called an exit condition. So when it detects silver, it leaves the loop and moves on to the next part of the program. Let's open our line following single sensor program and click on, click on the main loop block. Under the control section, you can see it's set to loop forever. We can change that to loop for sensor. We'll change it to loop, loop to exit based on the light sensor. I'm going to set the light sensor port to 1. Now this will exit when the value on light sensor on port 1 is greater than 50%. But hang on, we're using 50% as the threshold for our line following. So it needs to be a number higher than 50%. I wonder what we could use. We could guess a value, maybe 60, maybe 65, or we could measure a value. Let's measure a value. That way we'll know we're using the exact numbers to give us the behavior we want. What we're going to do now is write a small program that will read the values in the light sensor and display them on the screen. We'll then enter those values into a spreadsheet and do a little bit of simple maths to calculate both the threshold for following the line and also the threshold for detecting silver. So start a new program and save it. We'll call it Calibrate Light. C-A-L-I-B-R-A-T-E capital L-I-G-H-T Calibrate Light and save. We're going to start with a loop block. So drop down a loop block now we want to read the value of the light sensor. We've been using the light sensor connected to the weight block here. But for this job, we need to go to the complete palette, come to the sensor tab, and select the light sensor. This block will read the value from the light sensor, but instead of waiting, it will just pass the value down to the next block in the chain. So we're going to read the value on light sensor 1. Now we want to display the value on the screen. Now, the display block is going to expect some text. The light sensor block is going to output a number. Computers are very fussy about text and numbers. So we have to tell the system that we want to convert the number to text. So we're going to do that with a number to text block drop that down in between the two. Now I'm going to take the value from the light sensor block intensity port. See how I, when I hover the mouse over this uh, port here, it turns to a little electrical spool. I left click and drag the value into the input of the number to text block. We now, we now need to get the value out of the number to text block, pass it into the display block. Before we can do that, the display block is set up to display an image. 
So we're going to change that to display text. Now I hover the mouse over the bottom of the display block and you can see the cursor turns to a splitter bar. I left click and that opens up all the data ports. I'm going to left click on the output of the number to text block and right click on the matching input from the display block. One more thing to do. This is going to run very, very fast and produce a lot of an annoying flicker on the screen that's going to make it hard to read. We're going to take a weight block, drop that down at the very end. Instead of waiting for a sensor, we're going to wait for time. We're going to wait for 0 0.1 of a second. So we're going to compile, download, and run and we'll see what we've got. I'm going to hold the robot over the black tile now and you can see that it's reading 44. I move the number over the white part of a tile now and you can see it's reading 68. I move the robot over the silver and you can see it's reading 77. Now we need to take those values and do the maths on them. So I'm going to go to my browser and go to Google Docs. You can use any spreadsheet tool you choose. Excel, OpenOffice or my favourite Google Docs. If you're competing in RoboCup, however, Google Docs may not be the best choice as it probably requires an internet connection. And you might rather use Excel or OpenOffice. It doesn't matter, the principles are the same. So with Google Docs, I'm going to click on Create Spreadsheet. As always, I'm going to give it a good name. And the way to do that in Google Docs is File, Rename. I'm going to call it Calibrate Light. Calibrate Light Sensor. And click OK. So we're going to set the set the spreadsheet up with the necessary cells. In cell A2, I'm going to type the words sensor space one. Sensor one and a semicolon, or should I say a full colon. In column B, or should I say cell B1, I'm going to type black. In cell D1, I'm going to type white. And in cell F1, I'm going to type silver. So we'll check the value of black one more time and find that it's 44. So in cell B2, I'm going to enter the number 44. We check the reading over white and see that it's 68. So that in cell D2, I'm going to enter the number 68. Finally, we check the value over silver and I see that it's 77. So in cell F2, we enter 77. We have a couple more things to do. We need to find the halfway point between black and white. That will be the turn threshold when following the line. The maths for the halfway point between two numbers or the average of, the two, of two numbers, is to add the numbers together and then divide by two. Or add the numbers together and divide by the count of the numbers, which in this case, of course, is two. Now, to use a spreadsheet for this, we're going to tell the spreadsheet we want to enter a formula. And I do that by typing the equals character. Because of order of precedence, I then need to open some brackets, I'm going to click on cell B2 and the spreadsheet tool automatically enters the text B2 in the cell where we're entering the formula. I type the plus character and now I click on the cell D2 and the spreadsheet tool automatically enters D2. I close the brackets. I type the divided by symbol, which is the forward slash, which is underneath the question mark or over near the shift key. 
I enter the number 2, and then I hit enter. The spreadsheet has done the math for us. The halfway point between 44, or black, and 68, and white, is 56. Now we need to get the same formula in cell E2. Now we could just retype the formula, but spreadsheets are very clever about copying formulas. They use something called relative cell addressing. So if I copy the formula from C2 over to E2, it's automatically, it's going to automatically change the cells that it's referencing. You can see here, the formula in C2 is referencing the value of B2 and the value of D2. Watch what happens when I copy it. I select cell C2. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard by holding down the control key and pressing C. Note how there's the dotted line drawn around the cell. I'm going to click on cell E2 and paste the value, or should I say paste the formula in, by holding down the control key and clicking or pressing V. And the spreadsheet has entered the formula, and as you can see, it's automatically changed the cells it's referencing. So the formula in cell E2 is adding the value of white to the value of F and dividing by 2. Now, you can see that that's not a whole number. In fact, it's a decimal. So let's tidy that up by rounding this value to zero decimal places. I do that by selecting cell E2 and clicking the Decrease Decimal Places button. Now in, cell, in Excel and OpenOffice, there might be a different way of doing this. Often it's to right-click the cell and select Format. I'm going to do the same thing to cell C2. I select the cell and I select to decrease the number of decimal places. A couple more things I'd like to do. I'd like to highlight black, white and silver in bold so we can see that they're headings. So I select them by left clicking and dragging with the mouse. Then I click the bold button. I'll do the same thing to the word sensor 1. I left click it. I select bold. These would look better if they were centered. So I'm going to select all the columns by clicking in the column header and B, holding down the left mouse button and dragging. I then go to select the alignment option and click center. Good. Now all that remains to be done is to enter the value 73 as our threshold between white and silver. So I'm going to minimize Google Docs, go back to our line follow program, and in the loop block, we're going to loop until the light sensor reads 73. I'm going to compile, download, and run that, and we'll test the program. Oh dear, you can see it's still misbehaving. It's still attempting to follow the line. Well, that was frustrating. All this work and we don't appear to have made any progress. But I assure you we have. You have a shot at implementing both the calibration program and uh, coding up the spreadsheet to calculate the turn thresholds. And then we'll return in the next talk through and put the pieces together so that the line following program indeed exits when it sees silver. Good luck with both your calibration program and the calibration spreadsheet. The material we're covering in these talk throughs is hard and sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you may find that you're stuck. Often, it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help, then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org slash help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions, you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. 
You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years 5 to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.